having one person in mind when you're praying can make the difference. And you may never know that it was your prayer that made the difference. Amen. Having enough of God in you to realize that that person can't help themselves. In Delaware, we saw people come from everywhere. Israel, Russia, Canada, Hawaii, different places all over the continent. They came to our little church up there, which was a big church, and you can see thousands of people. But they, they came from everywhere because when they turned on the TV, they saw a man that can tell people things about their life. And see, a lot of people get caught up in that because they go to these soothsayers and fortune tellers. Okay. Well, you give me $25 today and I'll tell you your fortune. Mm -hmm. But see, I'm only going to tell you good stuff because that will make you come back and give me some more money. Fortune tellers is, is just exactly like a prophet. They read your beads They'll tell you things. They'll look at your hand and tell, oh, you're going to have a long life. Oh, I see a dark, six-foot, blue-eyed man coming in your life, and he's going to sweep you off like a chariot. I see this, I see that. I went to one one time. I went in there, I put my $20 down. She takes my hand, she looks at it, she says, oh, I looked down there and I said, well, what? She said, you're going to have a long life. I said, I hope so. And she started in about this junk about this happening. I said, oh, oh. I said, I paid $25. Here's what, I, here's what I want to know. Am I going to be a sales champ? Am I going to make a sales champ? Oh, yes. That's all I want to know. I got up. I left. I didn't have to make a sales champ. So I never went back and gave her $25 to find out any more about what she might know. I don't know if you know, if you read the Bible, you'll find that that is witchcraft. Yes, it is. That's where they call up people that have died, come back from the grave. You say, well, I don't believe that. Well, it's in the Bible. Exactly. One of them called one up and he got mad because he was called up. He said, what are you calling me up for? King yep. You can actually conjure up spirits. You can go and you can practice white witchcraft. They call it white magic. Black magic. They got several voodoo. They got several different ones. When I was in Arizona, I was getting ready to preach my first revival from Brother Smith that called Brother Ponce when I was in San Diego and said, hey preacher, I thought he wanted Brother Ponce. He said, uh, it, uh, you going to come preach me? So he had a little trailer that he let me stay in. So I went, I'd been on a three day fast and I, I, went, I, I said, well let me get Brother Ponce's permission. He said, he ain't God. He said, God told me to tell you to come and preach the revival. You don't need to ask man what you can do. You come. So I went in. I told Brother Ponce. Well, Brother Ponce had told me about three or four days before that to get ready. I, he saw me in a revival. So it was coming together as a picture. So I'm laying in this trailer. And somehow, I must have had my mouth open. A hair dropped right down inside of my mouth. And I gagged, and I gagged, and I gagged all night long. And that hair wouldn't come out. I couldn't wash it down or nothing. I didn't realize that somebody in his church was already praying against me and was performing what you call witchcraft in a realm of a spirit where they can send things to you. It's just like this. I can take any let me have a hand. I can take Kenny's hand and I can transform energy into his hand. 
And the anointing of God, if it's on you, can touch that individual and that individual can feel the same anointing and that's what causes healings and that's what causes miracles and that's what causes deliverances and the whole nine packages. Now that's under the anointing. That's under being a, a minister of the gospel or even a servant or anointed one of God. Donna can do it. You can do it. Amen. All of us Amen. that have the Spirit of God can do that. You can, you can actually transfer the anointing into somebody else. That's why the Bible says lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It didn't say they might. It says they shall. Well, a person that practices witchcraft can do the same thing, but they have to use a little different type of techniques. They use fingernails, clippings. They use hair. They use powder. They take pictures of you and they have seances over you or your family. Remember the man here that I stood there and he brought a picture of all these people and I pointed out the ones. I said, this one right here is the main character. And he said, yeah. I ain't never seen his family before, but I can see that spirit. And it's just a picture. How do you do that? It's because you, you're in contact. It's like every time you walk in a store or you go into a building, a work building, or you go to a church or you go someplace you walk into a friend's house, there's something that will touch you and make you feel something that's not right or wrong or, or is right. Yeah, right, right. Or you'll pick up a telephone and somebody's trying to talk to you and you feel on the other end that there's something wrong. And you'll say, what's the matter? Mm -hmm. You ever done that? Amen. See, that's, that's you being that one person that can make a difference in that one person's life. Being caught up into the Spirit. Being, being in an area with God that you know that when that person is in need, you have the power within you to pray the prayer of faith and break that shackle and chains. To do it, it takes concentration of God's Word. You've got to believe what you pray. Amen. I don't know how to explain this, but I heard Rev say this, and now I understand a lot more. He says, I get caught up in this. I'm in orbit with God. I'm in orbit. I'm up here all alone. Sometimes you can be all alone up here with God because your faith rises above all the fears, doubts, and unbelief. You have to have that kind of faith. And how do you get that faith? It's through the Word of God. And when the Word of God comes upon you and you hear that Word and that Word convicts you, that's what causes you to go to an altar. Did you know that? To make you get to an altar, here's what happens. You have to have a surrendering heart. You have to say, Lord, hear my. Touch me, mold me, make me, create with me. And when you do, when you go there, you can't have fear worrying about if Harold was, the conviction was on Harold, he can't have to worry about whether Mary's going to condemn him or not. It'll make no difference because Mary ain't going to be standing there at the judgment bar. And Mary can't do the same. Or you can't do the same with me. But we will do this. What we will do is we will wonder if somebody else is going to wonder what we've done wrong. It ain't nobody's business. Amen. You're the one that God's dealing with. You are the one that God wants to take and change everything in your life, your situations. To take your hands. Each one of your hands can be blessed today. I can, I can pray and agree with you that God blesses you between now and Christmas. How many believe that would happen? Here's the difference. I don't have to pray. All you got to do is believe. Amen. You see what I'm saying? It's nice to have somebody agree with you, but you got to believe. If you don't need me to pray for you, you can believe for yourself. That's the whole point. 